Welcome everybody to Baby and Me Yoga. I'm here with Jasper and baby Leo. So before we get started, making sure that your space is set up, uh, bringing in a prop like a bolster or a pillow, even if it's just from your couch, just to help use to fill space during class if we need it. Also, you can see I have baby on a blanket and so make them comfortable putting them on a blanket, towel or even a pillow uh, to be able to kind of manipulate and move them around if need be during class. All right, so we're going to get set up in a wide knee child's pose. So bringing yourself into the middle of your mat, take your knees wide and then here we're just going to melt forward. Bringing the arms out in front, you can bring your hands onto baby if you want to. See if you can bring your forehead down towards the earth. If your forehead can meet the mat, great. And again, this is where we can fill space. So if you're feeling like it's a reach to get down and melt in between the legs there, bring in your prop, bring in your pillow and feel free to just get comfortable in any way that suits you. Shift and adjust. This is your practice. Really melt into the space between your legs, melting your torso. Imagine a weight drawing your belly towards the floor. Releasing any muscles up the back and shoulders. Let your armpits be heavy, draw them towards the earth. Make sure there's no tension in your neck and your face is soft. Find that expansive breath as you inhale through your nose, expanding sideways through your rib cage, through your side bodies, and then settling on the exhale, finding that melting, that letting go. That's what we're going to be talking about today, this idea of surrendering. Surrendering to the chaos, to the challenges, to the ups and downs. Surrendering to those moments when you think you got it and then something throws a chink in your chain. Surrendering to it all, these mummy moments. Keep that nice abundance through your breath. And we're gonna slowly start to rotate, walking the arms over towards the right. And then when you feel you've kind of met your edge there, melt once again over that right leg. Keep reaching long with your left hand, reaching it forward, feeling that length through your left side body now. If you can rest your head down, great. Remember my cues or suggestions so you take what you want, take what you need. Beauty, let's walk over to the opposite side. So over towards the left, across baby. And then melt again. Really reaching through the right side body, reaching those fingers up, up, up as far away from your shoulder as you can. Melting the shoulders, melting the torso. And slowly returning back to center to walk yourself up and up and up. Good. All right, let's give the feet a little bang out. Bang, 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 bang. We've been on the ankles for a while now, and so it feels good to just give them a little bang out, a little movement there, and then make your way down onto your seat. At any point during class, if you need to tend to baby, feel free to do that in watch or press pause. Beauty of doing yoga at home. All right, so I'm not gonna cue you to whatever seat feels good for you. I just want you to come into that position now. So for me, it's Sadasana, where one leg is drawn in front of the other. That feels good for me. So sit up nice and tall in that seat. And what I mean by that is spill your pelvis. Make sure it's not spilling out the back or the front. Make sure that the pelvis is nice and level so you can put your fingers on your hips there and make sure the pelvis is nice and level. It's like a bowl and making sure that it's sitting parallel to the floor. And then that string pulling you up from the crown of your head, rest your shoulders down away from your ears. Good. 
We're gonna get right into our connection breath now. Our connection breath are our pelvic floor exercises, something much more than just a Kegel, remember. These exercises I hope you do daily, not just with me uh, once a week in class. Uh, these are your health and wellness going into even retirement and beyond, uh, making sure that our bits, that area of our pelvic floor and vagina are strong. All right, so it's a big inhale. And as you inhale, imagine your belly is a balloon expanding and softening and softening those muscles in between your sits bones. So letting them go as you inhale. And then as you exhale, draining the air out. And as you do that, the muscles of the pelvic floor, we're gonna scoop them up and lift and contract all the way up to the top of the vagina, okay? all the way up and then at the end of that exhale, so on six, I'm gonna say hug or connect and that's our connection to our core, not the six pack. So turn that off. The core is the third innermost belly muscle and here, when we connect and contract it, it's not like a big flex. Imagine a string connects to your hips and you're just gently cinching that string closed slightly. That's all it takes to connect to your core. With a fully lifted pelvic floor, there we find our connection breath. So let's bring our hands down to our lower belly, right above our pubic bone, right where that core is connected and sit up nice and tall. You can close your eyes if you want to, to help connect and focus. All right, pushing all the air out of your lungs. We're gonna do six count cycles now. Start your slow inhale for six. Expand your belly, feeling that swell sideways through your rib cage, soften between your sits bones. Six, and exhale. Now lift, gathering up the pelvic floor, lifting all the way up to the top of the vagina. And hug, cinch that string. Connect, good, inhale, open, soften and release. Expand, five, six, and exhale, lift. Two, three, four, five, and hug. You feel that connection? Okay, keep going at your own pace, at your own count. It doesn't need to be six breaths. If you can extend it longer, great. Just make sure each cycle is complete. Make sure you're letting go and opening on the inhale. And then on the exhale, ensure that you're lifting, contracting your pelvic floor all the way up to the end of your breath where you will find that gentle connection to your core. If you notice your muscles are twitching way deep down inside, that's a good thing. That just means you're connecting to these new muscles that have been perhaps turned off for a while. So that's a, that's a good sign. And finishing up your last cycle, take your time, there's no rush. Good and slowly release, release your bits, release your hands down, give your shoulders a little roll out, you can open your eyes. All right, let's scoop up those legs, draw them around behind. We're gonna come into tabletop position over top of baby, okay? So tabletop ideally is shoulders stacked over wrists, hips stacked over knees. Now if your wrists give you trouble, just scoot the hands forward slightly so there's a bit of an angle to your arms. Root down all 10 fingers into the floor, really root them down. And here we're gonna cycle through our cat-cow. So I will just show you from the side view, but you can stay here over top of baby. As you inhale, drop your belly like that weight is pulling the belly button down towards the floor and take your gaze up. Set your shoulder blades on your back and find length through the crown of the head. Exhale, drop your tailbone towards your heels, round your spine like an angry cat, and can you drop your head here, making sure there's no tension in your neck, just let your head hang. Good, inhale, following the breath, following your rate, not mine. As you inhale, gazing up, and as you exhale, rounding out, dropping the crown of your head. Keep moving, go slow, be mindful, making sure you're noticing all the different sensations that are coming up for you in your body. Cat-cow is really meant to lube up the spine. 
with this gentle movement, which is a really great exercise to do as you prepare for your day or as you prepare for a class. That's why it's often done at the beginning of a class. Let's do one more cycle in and out. And then coming back to neutral spine, coming back to tabletop. All right, we're gonna sweep the right leg around in front and come into this wide-legged lunge. So your foot is kind of off the side of your mat now. If your wrists are giving you trouble, feel free to come up onto the uh, fists and straightening the wrist crease out really helps here. Start to hinge forward and back. As I go back, I like to flex into my right toe and draw the toes up towards the sky. I love the sensation of that stretch up the back of the leg, but you do you. If you wanna move around in circular movement, you can, or half moons. If you just wanna move front to back and kind of Explore that cat-cow sensation that we were doing before. You can. If you want to scoop low and give baby a kiss, you can. Remember, this is your practice and my cues are just suggestions. So move in a way and do what feels good for you. I will invite you to make some big noisy breaths though. These out breaths are so powerful for us, for us mummies in order to help a let go, to help surrender. And so make some noisy breaths. I like horse slips or the shh, the waterfall breath is really great too. So let's explore those. Inhaling through your nose and exhaling long, forcing that out breath out. It's also a good distraction for baby. Last cycle. Beautiful. All right, let's sweep that right leg back in place and you can take the left leg around off to the side of your mat. I like to plie the toe out. Again, that feels good for me and my hip, but you do you, what feels good for you. I'm gonna come back down onto my palms now and start to shift and move. You're moving intuitively. You're moving to nourish your body, your muscles and bones right here, right now. So each class that's gonna look different. Each class is gonna feel different. Let's take those big nourishing out breaths. back into your hands, take your time, slowly rotate that leg back and around. All right, let's take the knees wide, curl the toes under, and we're gonna squat our way up to stand. And as we do that, we're gonna scoop up baby as well and come to stand with baby. Now, if baby is comfortable where they're at and you don't wanna disturb them, then no problem. Feel free to leave them there. You can do this whole next sequence without baby as well. All right, so I'm gonna grab baby Leo here. And we're gonna find our mountain pose. So if you don't have baby, just simply bring your hands down by your sides, palms facing forward. So I talk a lot about alignment, especially in postnatal, because it's so important to think about uh, if we don't have good alignment, that pelvic floor functioning isn't happening. That connection down there isn't gonna happen. And so all the many months of being pregnant, this can tend to happen, thrusting the hips forward, rounding the shoulders in, compensating for big, um, bountiful belly out front. And then the same thing tends to happen with baby. We tend to use our bodies as a shelf because it's kind of easier. It takes the weight off your arms, right? And helping baby to rest on your body like it's a shelf. Try to avoid doing that if you can, okay? Instead, find your mountain pose. Even when you're holding baby, find your mountain pose. So remember all those cues, stack your ears over your shoulders, shoulders over your hips, 
hips over your heels, root all four corners of your feet into the ground. So don't just sit in your heels. Make sure the toe mounds are rooted as well. Now this is important here, blossom your bum. When you tuck the tail under and round the spine, that's where we get that unoptimal alignment. So blossom your bum, blossom your butt. And then here, just stacking, chin is level to the floor. I love that cue lifting up through the crown of your head. Now you don't, you're like, not a lot is happening here. I'm just standing here. But there are so many important cues in mountain pose. So we are gonna take a few breaths here because this pose is key. This pose is really, really helpful for postpartum. Okay, so let's take those three big, noisy, juicy out breaths, whichever ones you want. So if your feet aren't all ready, make sure they're a little wider than your hips. And if it feels good for you, just plie the toes out. We're gonna come into a gentle squat, almost kind of like a chair. So I want you to arrange your feet in a position that feels good for you to come down. It doesn't have to be super deep, just a little. All right, so inhale, lift and lengthen through your spine. Find, find that beautiful tall mountain pose. Exhale, start to lower down. Okay, and we're gonna stay here in this gentle squat. Arrange your feet if you need to. Make sure your sit bones are going back. And here you're gonna keep holding on to baby on your chest. Good, so find that sweet spot for you. Keep blossoming your bum behind you to find length up through your spine and through the crown of your head. And right away, you're gonna start to feel those muscles in the foundation start to fire up, yeah? Yeah, I feel them. We're just gonna pulse gently here, kind of like you're rocking, baby. <sighs> Keep breathing because your muscles in that fire, <sighs> they need your oxygen. So they need that big, sweet inhale. So feed your muscles now. Keep blossoming your bum. Don't tuck the tail under. You'll start to feel pain in the lower back if you do that. So rather blossom your bum. Blossom your sits bones. Ooh, we're just about done. Keep that breath flowing. Five more seconds. Beautiful and slowly lift mountain pose again. Awesome. So if you don't have baby, we are going to take a forward fold. So you can take your hands just simply to your hips if you're not holding baby. And if you're holding baby, keep holding on. You take a big inhale, lift and lengthen through the crown of your head and exhale. We're going to come forward halfway, just halfway. And it doesn't even need to be fully half if you don't want to. If you just kind of want to come to a 45 degree angle, that's great too, no problem. Come forward slightly, but keep the legs straight. And again, blossom your bum. Find length up through your spine and right through the crown of your head. Don't drop your head. Keep your neck up in line with your spine. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, so remember the connection breath, those pelvic floor exercises we did at the beginning of class, we're gonna do a couple now. All right, so as you inhale, can you release your bits? And then as you exhale, gather them up and find that gentle contraction. Is it harder, is it easier? Inhale, release. Expand and exhale, lift. Just go at your own pace, last cycle. It's hard, right? Good. <sighs> Finishing up now. And then we're gonna spill all the way forward. If you don't have baby, you can just release your arms to the ground. And if you do have baby, you can take them towards the ground as well, lengthening your arms and rocking them back and forth. And we're just coming into a forward fold here. If your neck and spine allow, can you drop the crown of your head towards the floor, towards baby, and really let your head hang. Let there be no tension in your neck. This is a big, juicy stretch. You've got lots of sensations happening everywhere in the body, the back of the legs, lower back, shoulders, spine and neck. 
So be gentle, be easy with yourself. Find that micro movement, that gentle rocking and swaying. Keep breathing. Let go, surrender. Good, okay, if you have baby, we're gonna release baby down to the mat now. And for here, you can bend your knees as much as you need to, to place your left palm in the center between your feet, just a little above your toes. And then as you inhale, sweep your right arm up towards the sky. So left fingers on the floor, right arm up towards the sky. And if it allows you, if your body allows you now, we're gonna put a big bend in the left knee and attempt to straighten, yeah, straighten the right leg. Keep rotating, keep twisting up towards the sky. Really juicy. IT band and psoas right up through the glute here. Even perhaps into your lower back, you might be feeling it. On your exhale, sail your way down. Release your fingertips down to the floor on the right hand and then inhale, sweep left arm up, up, up. If it allows you, your body allows you can bend into that right knee straighten the left leg and you there you'll find a little bit more rotation and twist have you held your breath can you keep flowing that breath through you find your exhale and slowly rotate down okay so from here I'm just gonna shift back to the front from here we're gonna slowly squat down. Okay, so support yourself with your hands on the ground. We're gonna squat down into tabletop once again. Good. So this is a great um, time to bring in that prop, that pillow or bolster, or even if it's just a rolled up blanket, because I know a lot of pressure and weight on the wrists can uh, aggravate the joint. And so what I like to suggest is coming down onto forearms wherever we can in a certain pose. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to come down to forearms, either on a, on a pillow, on a rolled up blanket, or even you can reach all the way to the floor, no problem. And just bring your palms together in Anjali Mudra. Baby's right here in front of you, so you can attend to them if you need to. And here, we're gonna raise the right knee out to the right and start, imagine you're kind of drawing circles on the wall beside you with your knee. So opening up the hip, getting a lot of mobility and rotation into the hip joint. Guide it around. So wherever we get mobility, we create fluid around the joint and that fluid helps to lube up the joint. It helps to minimize pain. So if you're a sufferer of pain in your hips, this gentle movement and strengthening of the joint can really help. All right, and lower down. Other side, left leg comes up, cycle that knee forward. Big rotations around. Hmm, keep breathing. So amazing how one breath can be so healing and nourishing and peaceful. One more rotation around. Good. And lower down. Beauty. We're gonna move that prop out of the way again and come to sit down on your bum. Okay, so bringing your feet together into bound angle, you can take a baby and bring them kind of into this space here, resting their head on your feet or just really in this space in the center of your legs. So you get comfortable with baby however they're most comfortable. So sitting in bound angle, give your knees a little bob, 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 bob. And again, we're kind of asking that hip joint, which is a ball and socket joint, to release, to kind of surrender and let go. Yeah, good. Taking your hands to your shins, help to roll your pelvis forward. So again, this bowl here, your pelvic bowl, help to roll it forward to give you this nice tall seat. And if you wanna keep your hands here, to uh, maintain this tall seat, feel free to do that. Otherwise, we're gonna take the fingertips and tent them behind your back and find a gentle lift through your heart and through your chest. Imagine your shoulder blades are kissing your spine behind you. You can take your gaze up slightly if that feels good for your neck. 
and then slowly starting to inch those fingers, pushing your body and your torso forward, but still maintaining that nice long length through your spine. Start to come forward into this space with baby. Hello, baby. And then once you felt you met your edge, bring your arms back and around to just support you here in front. And if you want to, you can bring yourself down to kiss baby, rounding your spine, let your head hang. We're just settling into the space. Oh, any of these hip openers do require a great deal of surrendering, of really letting go. So check to make sure you're not bringing any tension into the jaw or into the eyebrows or wherever you tend to hold extra tension in your body. Can you just release it and let go? And that will help the hips to release and surrender as well. Your lower back, how is that doing? Can you push your breath there and allow your breath to help you to surrender? Especially those nourishing exhales, good. Okay, we're gonna slowly walk back up, very slowly, always taking your time. If you need to adjust the legs, you can. You can extend them out long. And coming to sit up into your tall seat. Interlace your fingers now and plant them on the back of your head. And then we're just gonna drop the chin towards the chest. So can you keep your shoulders up high over your hips? The body didn't come forward this time. Just the head is coming forward. And here we're getting that nice long stretch in through the back of the spine and neck. You're using your breath to help you surrender. <sighs> Let your elbows be heavy using gravity to help draw your head forward and creating that traction in your spine, a little bit of opening through the vertebrae, especially through the neck, it can be quite compressed throughout the day. And so this is a really beautiful stretch to do. Just make sure you're sitting up tall in your seat through your spine and back. On your inhale, come up through center and then exhale, drop the right elbow towards the floor and see if you can get your head into the crook of your left arm here. And then sometimes what happens is our alignment gets lost. And so can you push the back of your head into your arm as much as possible to then get that height, those ears stacked over your shoulders? See if you can do that or get as close as possible. Hmm. All right, sail your way up on your inhale. Take your time. And then exhale, drop left elbow towards the floor. Get your head into the crook of the right. And realign. Check in with the hips. Are you holding on to tension there in the joint? You can give the knees a little flop if you need to again to help release. Sometimes it's just about bringing awareness into these spaces that we hold to stress and tension to allow them to release. Inhale, come back up through center and exhale, release down. Okay, I'm gonna get you to come into a comfortable seat, whatever that is for you. And then taking baby onto their space, we're gonna do a little baby massage. All right, so massage fingers. Babies, the babies tend to not like the tickly fingers. Uh, tickles can kind of scare them because it's a big sensation. And so generally we use the palm to help massage. And so what we can do is we can start with the legs and kind of do this gentle compression. And not so much a massage, it's more of a compression. And so compressing on the joints of the ankles, pressing on the bottoms of the feet, kind of waking up baby's muscles and senses, pressing on Gently pressing on the thighs as you work your way up. Gently pressing on the outside of the pelvis, the hips. Yeah. And then the belly. I like to do just a gentle circular massage on the belly. Especially if baby is tending to be a little bit more colicky or gassy. These gentle circular massages can really help to move things along. Good. And then keep working your way up and up and up to the shoulders. And sending your energy to baby. That calm, that peacefulness, that state of surrender. Working down the arms now. 
Remember that gentle compression. Compressing the joints it can feel really, really relaxing and soothing. That's why some people like to lay under heavy blankets, weighted blankets. It's because it feels good for the joints to have that gentle compression on it. Good. All right, up to the head now. So here you can use your thumbs because baby's face is little. And so taking your thumbs right into their third eye to the center of their forehead and just gently pressing there and then draw your thumbs out to their temples. And so you can change the location, bringing it up a little higher, maybe to their hairline and gently draw it out to their temples. And just checking in, if baby's a little bothered by this, doesn't seem to like it, then no problem. Just stop, adapt, go back to something that they do. Like we're taking baby's cues here. Good. And then with your thumbs, drawing it down onto the front of the ear. And then your finger can draw down behind the ear. There's lots of little muscles there that lie in the connections with the skull to the neck. So massaging the back of the neck can feel really good too. Yeah, this is just a gentle massage. And if baby is open to it, you can take your thumbs around the eye sockets and do just a gentle cheek massage. Again, out towards the temples, across the cheeks, down the jaw. This can be a really lovely uh, bedtime routine that you can do with baby. Using your favorite lotions or oils after their bath with no soap. <laughs> yeah, okay. So finishing up massage, maybe some long sweeping compressive down the body. Good. All right. So if baby's happy, we're gonna leave them there and we're gonna make our way into tabletop once again. You can bring yourself over top of baby if you want to. So I'm just gonna show you from the side view so you can see a little easier. We're gonna extend the right leg out long and press the toe mound into the ground and stretch in through that calf. Our calves take a lot of weight and bearing throughout the day. So it's really, really beautiful to get in there and find a good stretch. It's our foundation too. Much of what we're feeling in our neck and shoulders actually comes from our foundation. And so getting a good stretch in there is really amazing for the whole body, for the whole system. Okay, I'm gonna give you some options now. We're gonna leave that toe mount down on the ground for now. And we're gonna slowly raise the left arm up, reach your fingers forward and then plug the shoulder into the socket. So plug it in. And there we've kind of created this connection, this integration in the body. And that helps connect to the core. And when we can connect to the core, we help find stability in a balanced pose. So if you want, you can stay here. If this is enough for you, this semi-balance. Or if you want, you can come into full sunbird, raising that right leg up, seeing if you can bring it up parallel to the ground. Now. Flex your foot, shine a beam of light out of your heel and really engage that leg like that strong mountain leg. Then plug the right hip into the socket. So left shoulder plugs, right hip plugs, and there we have our stability, that integration, that stillness, that center, that mummy strong. Don't hold your breath. One more breath cycle. Wow, hey? Slowly release and slowly release. Find that strength through your center. Rotate the hips around. We're gonna do the opposite side now. Okay, extend the left foot, pressing the toe mound into the floor. Oh, glorious stretch through that calf. Remember your muscles, they need your oxygen. So feed your muscles, your breath, wherever you're feeling resistance in your body, that's where you push your breath. Surrender, surrender. Good. All right, we're gonna raise the right arm up this time. Reach your fingers forward and then plug the shoulder into the socket. If you want to stay here, you can. Otherwise, you can raise that left leg up, flex in through the heel, charging all the way up to your glute, and then plug the left hip into the socket. Really plug it in. Plug right shoulder, plug left hip, and there's your mummy center. 
that mommy strong. Awesome. All right, slowly lower hands, slowly lower knee, and come back to tabletop. Okay, sitting back on your toe mounds, sitting up onto your heels. We're gonna interlace the fingers behind you now, kind of like you're holding your own hand, and then find a beautiful heart lift. So squeeze your shoulders to your spine. Mm. It's not a back bend, you're not engaging your six pack here. You're just lifting up through your heart, through your chest. <sighs> Feels beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna come into down dog next. So you can release and roll out the rest. Down dog can be hard on the wrists, I know that. We're not gonna be there long. We are gonna come into down dog and then lift up one leg for three dog and then the other leg for a three dog on the other side. Now, in yoga, especially after you've had a baby, whenever you drop your head below your pelvis, so like in a forward fold or a down dog position, there always is a tendency for air to escape up into the vagina and you have this queefing noise, okay? So you're in the comforts of your own home, so if that happens, that's okay. Um, but what I want you to do is be aware of how to engage that area so this doesn't happen frequently for you. All right, so we're gonna come into a down dog, and as we do that, I want you to find that gentle lift in your bits like we did at the beginning of class, but more gentle, more like a 10 or 20% engagement of your bits as you drop your head below your pelvis. And then when you do that, it will protect that area from any air escaping up into it, okay? So let's try, I'll show you from the side view. You can come over top of baby, starting in tabletop, and then walk your hands one palm length forward, curl your toes under, lift up and back into downward dog. Engage your bits 10 or 20%, not a lot, but just enough to help protect any air. All right, settle your armpits in towards the ground. Hmm, good, let your head hang. All right, so keep your bits engaged. We're gonna raise the right leg up, three-legged dog, point the toe towards the sky. Open up the hips. And lower down. Inhale, left leg goes up towards the sky. Good, keep your bits engaged. Lower down, go slow. And then here, lower both knees down to the ground. Told you it wouldn't be long. Good. And come back to sit up. Awesome. Okay, shimmy your way back to the back of your mat. And we're gonna scoop our way down. We don't do full planks like a push-up position in this class because it's too much intra-abdominal pressure at this point. After you've had baby, it's still too soon. And unless you've gotten the okay from your pelvic floor physiotherapist, we don't wanna do anything that's really creating that intra-abdominal pressure inside the belly, like planks, sit-ups, crunchies. So rather, from a tabletop position, nose dive your way down and come to your belly over top of baby. Now, I love Sphinx pose as a modification to Cobra. Cobra can be really deep, really juicy for the back, and we've done a lot of back warm up today, so I'm gonna give you Cobra as an option. But for now, let's shift the elbows below the shoulders, palms down on the ground, right over top of baby so you can be here, connecting, bonding, and your toenails, pressing them into the floor. Tuck your tail so you can feel your pubic bone pressing into the floor too. And then from there, from your pubic bone, lift and lengthen up through the crown of your head. And this is Sphinx pose. You kind of kind of feel this melting here in your belly towards the floor. So if you want to stay here, otherwise we're gonna take a breath in Cobra, slide your hands down so the base of your rib is right at the heel of your hand. Slide your hands down and then inhale, open up for Cobra, making sure you're still feeling your pubic bone pressing into the earth. It hasn't lifted up, that would be up dog. Good, and slowly lower down. Very juicy, that one. Okay, so we're gonna prepare for our Shavasana now. If you wanna just take your spot right here, you can um, come in with baby. Baby can be cuddled up by your side, on your belly, whatever feels good for you. If you wanna take you and baby to a nearby bed or couch, if that's more comfortable, you can do that too. Of course, it's always an option to do your Shavasana seated, which is what I'm gonna do. So get comfortable now into whatever position you think that you and baby can be in for the next mm, four or five minutes, okay? <sighs> 
getting comfortable, shifting around if you need to. Ideally, Shavasana is done in a position where you can find a lot of relaxation in the physical body, that melting. So moving there now. And if you're able to gently close your eyes. So we'll start off by being witness to what is going on for you right here, right now in the physical body. In your muscles, in your bones, in your joints, ligaments and tendons. What's coming up for you? What are you feeling? Allow any thoughts to come in, the good ones or the bad ones. It's all welcome. Just noticing it, you're just being witness to it. Kind of like you're sitting in the corner of your mind watching. Scanning down from your forehead to your tippy toes. Keep the abundance through your breath. Filling up your lungs to completion and draining the air out all the way. Settle into that easy rhythm of your breath, that rhythm, that pace that baby knows so well. teaching baby to stay present, staying here right now. Teaching baby the power of being present, that it is a gift. your attention is brought away and distraction enters into your space with compassion gently bring it back right here right now to this present moment Staying here for as long as you need. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today. The light in me honors and bows to the light in both of you. Mama stay.